Hi, everyone, and welcome to, uh, to our talk. Uh, my name is Mike Stenta. Um, I'm the maintainer of a project called FarmOS. And um, I'm joined today by uh, Paul Widener and uh, Jamie Gearing, who are um, here to present on some other parts of the project that uh, they contribute to as well. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to welcome everyone. Um, thanks for coming to the Docker community all hands, and thanks for the opportunity to show what we're working on. So uh, FarmOS is an open source farm planning and record keeping system. Uh, and it has a, a real focus on kind of data ownership and sovereignty uh, so that each farmer who uses this platform can you know, have more control over their own data. They can use it for um, all their day-to-day -day record keeping, uh, task management, um, and things like organic certification requirements. So a lot of farms have uh, um, requirements uh, either through the government or, or through organizations that they're associated with that uh, they are required to keep records. So FarmOS just provides a place to do that. And it's open source. It's something we've been working on for a number of years. And um, um, yeah, we've been seeing some good, good interest. So it's, it's used by both individual farmers uh, as well as um, researchers, uh, farming associations who work with lots of farms. Uh, the USDA is currently um, implementing a deployment of FarmOS. And it's also used in other contexts too, such as forest management um, on larger scales, like the countrywide. Uh, and so um, FarmOS itself provides uh, a number of things. It provides a UI for managing your records. So you can come in and manage your animal assets, your land assets, your plants. It also has sensor integration. So you can set up little Raspberry Pis or Arduinos in a greenhouse, send that data to FarmOS to trigger alerts and things like that. Um, and you can record all of your activities, all of your logs like harvests and inputs, um, observations, things like that. So it, it allows uh, for browsing and managing all of this data um, via map interface or via lists of, of various record types. And so the goals are to be able to really collect anything that is happening on a farm, which can be a lot of different things. Farms are very diverse. There's a lot of different types of operations. Uh, FarmOS is not made just for large scale farms. It's made for um, pretty much any scale you can think of. Uh, my background is in small scale agriculture, but I work with a lot of larger farms now as well. And it's for not just plants, but animals, equipment. It's modular too, so you can create a module. We have a module for beekeeping, for mushroom cultivation, um, and anyone can kind of create their own modules too and maintain them themselves. So it's so you need to be able to use this anywhere also. So it's a server-based software, and we use Docker for a lot of different things with uh, with our FarmOS um, deployments. So you can get to the GitHub at github.com slash farmOS. And within the FarmOS core repository itself, we use Docker for, uh, for a couple of different things. Um, the, the main thing that we use it for is just encapsulation. I think that's what, what Docker, where Docker really shines, is that we can kind of package up all the dependencies for FarmOS within a single image that we can then give to uh, farmers or developers to deploy themselves or to use in their development environments. So we host, um, we host our, our images on Docker Hub. We have an official image there. And we have both a uh, sort of a, a default image defined in this Docker file, but then also a development image. And this kind of includes some development tools and, and tooling to help with the development process. So uh, one of the nice things though, is that we're, we're um, able to uh, also use Docker Compose to quickly set up local development environments. So we have this documentation on docs.farmos.org for anyone who's interested. And step one is really just set up the Docker containers. So we have um, we have a, a template Docker Compose file, which will set you up with a PostgreSQL container and a FarmOS container running locally. And that allows someone to just basically clone that um, clone that YAML file and then run sudo docker compose up locally and it will set up their their local development environment. And then you know you're able to get an environment like this that you can play around with and develop on or write your own modules, which is really nice. So we we recommend 
we actually use this as our recommended hosting system too. So there's different ways that you can host FarmOS on your own server, um, but we, we recommend Docker as the way just because we know that that will contain all the dependencies and things like that. Um, so that's so we also provide a, a template Docker Compose for that purpose. Um, yeah, and so uh, uh, other places where Docker gets used are in automated testing. We use um, right now we're using GitHub Actions to uh, whenever a pull request is made or a um, you know a new branch, new feature branch is pushed, it will trigger uh, a GitHub action which will um, build the Docker image and build the dev image to make sure that things work with those builds. But then it will run our automated testing suite against uh, against those images as well too. And it runs it against three different databases too, which is really neat. So we can, we can use the same Docker image connected to a PostgreSQL database, connected to a MariahDB or a MySQL database, and connected to an SQLite 3 database to make sure that those tests all pass for every kind of feature that we're that we're working with. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jamie Gearing. Uh, and so Jamie works on two projects, FieldKit and FarmOS.js. So I'll turn it over to him. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, yes, my name is Jamie Gearing. I am a JavaScript developer working on uh, primarily uh, two, two projects. Um, the first is um, FarmOS FieldKit, which is uh, it's our mobile first um, and uh, significantly offline first uh, single page application that runs uh, independently of, of FarmOS uh, itself. Um, and, you know, this is kind of important because, um, you know, obviously we're working with farmers. Um, farmers, you know, don't spend a lot of time at a desk, desktop computer, uh, but are in the field obviously, um, and they're in the field in rural, rural areas um, and far from any Wi-Fi. Uh, so having offline first uh, capabilities is absolutely key um, and something that we really, we really need kind of the um, features of, um, you know, kind of modern JavaScript environments to, to be able to facilitate well. And uh, so that's FieldKit, and a lot of what FieldKit then does is also facilitated by a client library called FarmOS JS, uh, which really works as sort of the engine for FieldKit, and uh, it, in fact, kind of replicates a lot of the FarmOS data mod model in the client, maintains its own database, et cetera, um, and then it also will handle a lot of the merge conflicts that arise between the client and server databases. Um, you know, so one of the things that this, you know, this all leads to um, is just a lot of complexity, right? So, you know, talking about merge conflicts, you know, one of the things that being offline first means inevitably um, is you've now got a concurrency issue because you have not one database, but two databases. Uh, that need to remain synchronized and handle conflicts when they arise. Um, and not only that, but we also have our own uh, module system, right? So, um, you know, the shape of, of the data can be very different um, in different, you know, different clients connecting to different servers, um, both with their own configuration. Um, and that means we need to share configuration at runtime. Um, you know, so just, you know, really to drill, I guess what I'm, I'm zeroing in on here is just, you know, kind of endless complexity, right? Um, that is, you know, only grows exponential, you know, the more, uh, the more we continue to develop FieldKit and FarmOS and their um, respective modules. Um, and so, you know, where does Docker come into play for this? You know, I, you know, am a front-end developer. Um, you know, I work on single page applications specifically because they don't really need anything but a web server to run. Um, you know, I don't understand all the aspects of the PHP server environment, nor do I want to. Um, so Docker basically, you know, cuts my, comp my com uh, complexity in half. 
um, just by not having to think about that server complexity, um, while at the same time enabling me to continue to um, you know, run against, run my clients against all different permutations of, of uh, server configurations um, combined with whatever configuration I'm running in the client. Um, and that's not just helpful for my own sanity, but ultimately, you know, as an open source project, um, you know, we're always looking to bring new developers into the fold. And in 2021, going into 2022, so many more developers are out there in JavaScript land um, these days. And it's a huge pool of development uh, resources that we can tap into. Um, and uh, lowering the barriers to that is definitely this managing of complexity through Docker, um, you know, because again, there's a lot of developers out there who, you know, never used PHP at <laughs> this day and age. So um, yeah, so that's a, that's a great boon for us. Um, that's great. Thanks, Jamie. And um, now I'll just turn it over to Paul Widener to talk briefly about the PharmaOS aggregator. Paul? Hey, thanks. Yeah, so I'm, my name is Paul Widener. I'm primarily a backend developer working on some of the PharmaOS projects, one of which is the PharmaOS aggregator. Um, so the aggregator is a microservice designed to integrate with multiple PharmaOS instances. And um, we integrate with these instances via a REST API, which allows us to both aggregate or get data from the PharmaOS servers, but also to send data to the PharmaOS servers. And um, this aggregator is supporting local groups, researchers, and associations who want to collaborate with their farmer members um, and their farm data. So some of these use cases have farmers inputting data outside of PharmaOS, and then it gets synced uh, into the PharmaOS server all behind the scenes. So the big challenge with this is um, authorizing with each PharmaOS server because these PharmaOS servers can potentially be self-hosted. Um, uh, they are all their own OAuth provider. And so the aggregator helps mitigate these challenges um, by just providing a workflow for uh, PharmaOS users to authenticate or to auth authorize their server with an aggregator. And so they can opt in to data data sharing at different levels. Um, and that all uses the OAuth authorization flow and different OAuth scopes. And the aggregator stack is a, it's actually a Python fast API application with a Postgres uh, database and has a simple Vue.js front end. So we use Docker um, for both hosting and development of the aggregator. We actually have two Docker images one for the back end and one for the front end. And um, our back end image actually inherits from the upstream fast API uh, image. So that's that was very helpful in getting up like a, a server uh, running both locally and, and in production. Um, we also use uh, Docker for full integration tests on GitHub. So, so the aggregator within the GitHub actions will um, pull down the PharmaOS core server as, a, as another image so that we can fully integrate between the aggregator authorizing and authenticating with a, uh, like a test PharmaOS instance. So Docker makes that all very easy. Great, thanks, Paul. Yeah, and so, um... Just to wrap up, uh, thanks again for everyone coming. Um, we uh, One thing that we uh, would really like some help with if anyone is interested is uh, in running um, a Docker image on Raspberry Pis. There's been some work done to, to make that possible, but one of our open issues right now is to kind of automate that and provide a, uh, an official ARM support image. So if you're interested in helping that, uh, find us in the PharmaOS chat room. You can go to pharmaOS.org to get more information about where that chat room is. Um, also, uh, tell farmers. So if you know of any farmers, if you're, if you're you know, supporting local agriculture, tell them about PharmOS. Go to farmos.org uh, for information on how to sign up. 
Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.